So if you have your Bibles with you this morning, let us open to Luke 8. We're going to read from verses 43 to 48. If you didn't bring your Bible, it's going to be on the screen. And it says, now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her uh, livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind and touched the border of his garment and immediately her flow of blood stopped and Jesus said who touched me when all denied it Peter those with him said master the multitudes uh, uh, the multitudes throng and press you and you say who touched me but Jesus said, somebody touch me for I perceive power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling all and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. It always surprises me, uh, Peter always in the Bible that... Um, when Jesus asked the question, it doesn't, doesn't dawn on Peter that he's not, he's not trying to literally ask the question, who touched me? Peter's always the smart one like, hey, Jesus, come on. We're all touching you. It's like Jesus is asking a question, who touched me? Because there was a person that had a different touch. That when she reached out to Jesus, the power went out from Jesus and healed somebody's life. Amen. When they, what you have to understand, something about this story that captivates me is that as the crowd begin to, to begin to push and shove and come in contact with Jesus, there was a person that was able to do the same thing what everybody else was doing, but yet withdraw from Jesus something that her life depended on. She was able to be able to, to come in contact with Jesus just like anybody, just like the disciples, just like the crowds were always just with him. But she was able to withdraw from Jesus that which her life depended on. This morning I want to speak to you shortly on this topic called Who Touched Me? few points that I just want to be able to take out of the store to be able for us to be encouraged and to learn how to be able to live a life where we are not just you know coming in contact with Jesus and our life begins to decay but how we can stay close to Jesus and to be able to receive that from him which our life needs if it is healing that we can receive from if it's deliverance if it is salvation maybe for our friends or of our family if it's maybe financial breakthrough Jesus has the solution to every part of our lives amen church if it's in our marriage if it's in our business if it's in our health maybe if it's in your emotional state Jesus is the solution to every part that you are looking for amen church for 12 years this woman was suffering with the issue of blood we have to understand something for 12 years to be able to suffer with an issue it is hard not to make that issue begin to become a part of your life when a problem persists for 12 years it is not easy to be able to not make that thing a part of you we see it in the Bible and this is the person that nobody knows the name of this woman. Everybody knows this woman as the woman with the issue of blood. For 12 years she was suffering with a problem and that problem became a part of her that everybody was around her began to call her the woman with the issue of blood. The everybody that whenever she was at a home, whenever she was in her workplace, they didn't even call her by her name anymore. They called her as a woman with an issue of blood. One thing with this problem that, that she was experiencing was that this issue of blood, uh, the moment you, you, you begin to release this, this smell from you that nobody nobody can be around you in in the Jewish law it was said that if you had this issue of blood you were ceremonially unclean and you were not allowed to be around public people you were not you were declared unclean everybody who you came in contact became also unclean so anything that you touched became unclean you were not allowed to be in public places you know, basically you were isolated from everybody else first point that I want you to take out from this is that your problem does not have to be your identity but your history 
Your problem cannot become your identity. It could be for 12 years as this woman had. It could be for 20 years. It could be for a year. It could be a month. But you should not allow your problem to become your identity. But you should let the problem be only a history of your life. It could be only the thing that you look upon in the back and say, Jesus was faithful. I was going through a season. But Jesus is faithful and he brought me out. And not become your identity. Not to become, oh, they call me a failure oh they tell me I would not amount to nothing everybody in my family you know never graduated high school everybody in my family is divorced and this is my destiny and because it's been happening for so many years we are become accustomed that this is who I am this is my identity and this is how I will become but we learn from this story as this woman for 12 years it says that she went from physician to physician she began to spend her livelihood but it only became worse and worse. But one thing that I love about this woman that she kept seeking for the answer. This woman, even though she was called the woman with the issue of blood, but for all this time, she continued in pursuit for her healing. She did not want to settle with just being the woman with the issue of blood because she knew there was more. She knew that there is a place that offered her freedom. She knew that there was a place that offered her deliverance. There was a place that offered her healing and she knew that day would come. She spent all her money from doctor to doctor going from every doctor and the doctor says you know there's no solution you know and they take her money from going from place to place and and not being allowed in public not being allowed to be around your family not around be able to to be married not being allowed to become to get a job to live a normal life she kept fighting her issue she kept fighting her problem but she knew they're gonna come a time that she's gonna made gonna come in contact with the savior of the world who's gonna turn her life upside down amen church your problems you either can make through your problem you can either either become better or you can become bitter every problem is a knife you can either grab it by the blade or you can grab it by the handle and use it as a weapon against your enemy Every single person, you know, they always, they always say, why do bad things happen to good people? But I want to tell you that bad things happen to good people, but also better and best things happen to good people. Every time you encounter a problem, you think that, why am I going certain things? Why am I struggling with issues? And, you know, what did I do to deserve this? You might see it as some bad things happen. But let me tell you this morning that better and also best things happen to those who wait upon God. The better and best things happen to those who trust in Jesus Christ. And that's how it happened with this story with the woman with the issue of blood she knew that her life she might not deserve the the thing that she had she might not be able to to be qualified for the good life but she also had hope that there will come a day that she will receive the best life that Jesus has to offer her the day comes that she will be able to receive the things that Jesus Christ has died for that is healing that is deliverance and all of God's blessings amen church put your hands together for our God who to whom nothing and nothing is impossible amen church So many people begin to come in contact with Jesus and it's she was not the only one who had problems. She was not the only one that had issues but this woman with the issue of blood she knew that my, my issue is not my identity. It's who Jesus Christ has says that I am and I am pursuing after that and I'm going after that and I'm going to achieve what Jesus Christ has given me. The funny, the funny part about this story that I, I never saw before is that Jesus walks and as if like Jesus doesn't have enough healings to offer to people you know he goes from town to town begins to heal people he goes you know delivers those who are oppressed begins to save you know and there comes a time where she touches Jesus and it's like Jesus you know you are already on your on your mission to go to a different place you are in the crowd and everybody's wanting to go to to ruler's house and it's important why does Jesus stop and begins to say who touched me and then Peter's like oh come on Jesus you know everybody's touching you it's like Peter no stop don't don't say that it's, it's let Jesus finish his thing and Jesus does not want to it's like Jesus does not want to leave this place without finding out who touched me it's something is 
one thing that about this lady if you see she wanted to steal a blessing from Jesus and get away with it a thief how does how is a thief successful a thief is someone who takes something and walks away being noted unnoticed and Jesus as he's walking to to his mission and he sees the power begins to withdraw from him and nobody says anything nobody cries out anything, and he stops and says who touched me he said I, I know that something happened to me because power has withdrew and she begins to like wow just begin to withdraw and Jesus tries to stretch a point that I do not want to give my blessing to a thief but I want to give my blessing to a daughter of a most high God I do not want to just give my blessing to somebody who does who doesn't deserve it I want to give my blessing to a son and to a daughter she wanted to to just steal a blessing and walk away from it but Jesus is like I do not want you to leave this blessing and then later begin to fight with your conscience that I stole something I don't deserve this you know I don't deserve this good life and struggle with the guilty conscience but Jesus wants to stress a point that you do deserve it the blessing belongs to you you do not have to sneak behind me and take it from me unnoticed I want to give this is my will this is what I died for this is what I live for this is what I resurrected for for your good life Life, for your healing for your blessing you're not a thief but you're a son and you're a daughter of the most high God amen church put your hands together for Jesus Christ we begin to many times live our life as if the identity our issues become us as though we are we will never amount to nothing Maybe, you know, parents said something towards your life and that begin to, to be in our subconscious. Every time we do something, it screams to us, this will happen for so many years and this is who we are, will not change. If it's maybe certain weaknesses that we fight against for years and years and years and it feels like there is nothing that is, begins to become better. And just like with this woman, the more she tried, the worse her situation got. The less money she had. You know, her, her confidence was just broken into pieces. She, she didn't even believe that things were already possible. I mean, imagine for 12 years, going day after day, day after day, looking in the mirror. And as, as blood begins to flow out of her life, begins to flow out of her face. She begins to, you know, look like more of a, like a dead person than actually a, than a person that is living. And every day that happens and your, your confidence, your money, your life begins to cripple down. But she said, I am not my issue. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I have what God said I have. And that one day, begin to change the history of our life amen church and I believe as some people are here tonight uh, this morning maybe it's your first time maybe you've been coming to church for some time know that Jesus Christ wants to bless you know that Jesus Christ wants to restore your whole life maybe you feel like you're unqualified maybe you feel like you don't deserve that but Jesus doesn't want to make you feel like a thief but he makes you feel like a daughter and a son that Jesus Christ has died for and says that you are worthy you deserve it it belongs to you I came to this earth for that reason so your life become so you can get from worse to better and to become to the best amen church that is the God you serve this morning second point I want, I want us to write down is that your disqualification qualifies you for God's mercy I don't even know if that's English English correct terms but it's it made sense to me last night your disqualification qualifies you for the mercy of God one thing that in the Old Testament it was prohibited if you were unclean, if you had certain weakness or certain deformities, you were not allowed to enter into the, the God's temple. In the New Testament, we see that through Jesus Christ, God begins to dwell upon men, with men, and he's able to be with them. And, uh, you know, if in order for you to be a doctor, you're supposed to have a certain qualifications that make you to be a doctor. If you want to be a teacher, you also need to go through schooling and, and that qualifies you to be that teacher. Uh, same thing for a fireman, policeman, same thing for uh, any job status, any, you know, a lawyer or a president. There has to be certain qualification that takes you to that place. We see with this woman, everything in her life disqualified her to receive and to meet Jesus where he was at with the 
Jewish law said that if you, if you had this issue of blood, you were not allowed to be in a public place. You actually could have got stoned for being in public and coming in contact with other people. Everything in her mind was screaming against that. You cannot be in this place. Everything in her mind was telling her that you aren't qualified. What makes you think that Jesus will be reaching out to you? You know, everything that she touched by, according to Jewish law, became unclean. The moment she was in public and, and people would begin to smell the, the thing, the, the, the smell that would come out from her. The moment somebody would notice that, they could just pick up stones and kill her at the same spot. She was disqualified. She was at a disadvantage to receive from Jesus Christ. But for Jesus, that was the qualification for her to receive her miracle that day. Your broken marriage, it qualifies you to have the most successful marriage. Your broken family qualifies you to have a family that it says that me and my house will serve God. You know, your limitation, your weakness qualifies you to be somebody that God can use to change your family, to, to become a hero in your community, to become a person of significance in your life. Our limitation becomes the qualification for God to use us to be able to impact a dying generation. You know your criminal background, your weaknesses, maybe it's something that you've done in the past qualifies you to become a home group leader, to offer hope to those who are dying, to those who are in need, to those who are fatherless. Your limitation qualifies you for God to use you. That day she was she knew she was facing every odd against she knew that everything that she she could come in contact she knew that that would be something that if she was caught she could have deserved death but Jesus Christ sees it the opposite in God's world Jesus sees your weakness as something that can bring a miracle into your life we see two people coming to the temple we see a Pharisee and a tax collector and the, and the tax collector comes to to the temple and he says you know God I thank you that I'm like not not like this person you know I'm not sinning I'm not doing this you know I'm paying my tithe I'm good you know I thank you that I'm not this 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 and there comes a a tax collector sinner comes and says he couldn't even lift up his head and he said God have mercy upon me and we see Jesus with this story he says that that this tax collector's prayer was heard the more he left justified the place because when we come to God and we say God you know my life is good I deserve this you know God I didn't sin this week so I deserve your mercy and God says that is something that repels me from blessing you because the moment you come to Jesus Christ and you said Lord I am not qualified but I'm asking you for mercy and grace that is God that is when God begins to pour out his blessings upon you begin to give you the things that you do not deserve same with this woman with the issue of blood. She knew she was undeserving. She knew she shouldn't be there at that time. She knew that, you know, that if she touched Jesus, Jesus would become unclean because that's what the law said. But that moment qualified her to receive the blessings from God. <clears throat> King David brings an example for each one of us. And as King David every time he became a man after your own God heart because King David learned a secret that when you come into God's presence King David laid down his trophies King David began to take off the king the coat of kingships of his life he begins to lay down every award that was ever given to him and he came to Jesus and he began to ask for mercy and he began to ask for grace in Psalm 51 you know as we all know as he begins to come and he begins to weep and he begins to ask for mercy. He doesn't come to, to Jesus and he doesn't say, God, you know, I, I, I killed Goliath. You know, I won so many victories. You know, I deserve your presence. He comes with a humble attitude and he begins to lay down every award that has ever given him. Every achievement, the coat of kingship and begin to lay it down and be saying to say that, God, I'm not worthy of your presence. Please do not take your Holy Spirit from me. And that's when David becomes a man after God's own heart. Many times when we come to God's presence and we put on this, this facade that, you know, I'm okay. Things are well with me. You know, I don't need God. I don't, you know, I achieve certain things. And we feel like we do not need to ask God for mercy and grace. That is the wall that becomes, you come between you and God. 
And that is when God cannot come, cannot bless us. God cannot pride as something. It's like a dirty rag to God. It, it stinks. It's, God hates it. God doesn't like the times when we come and say, you know, God, I tried this week. You know, I need to be blessed. No, God wants to see your, your disqualification. God wants to say, I want to qualify you for a good life. I want to qualify you for a greater marriage. I want to qualify you for the, for the best life. I want to qualify you for the life that you might think you don't deserve, but that's what qualifies you to receive the life that Jesus Christ has died for this morning. Amen church? That is the God that you serve. Our weakness, our limitations shouldn't be a thing that pushes us away from Jesus Christ but pushes us further and closer to him because Jesus Christ looks for the qualified so he can give him mercy and his grace. Amen church? The last point I want to tell you is that make pursuit of Jesus your life goal. You don't decide if you meet Jesus you only decide when you meet Jesus we don't get a choice to decide if we do we only decide when you know each one of us we will one day face Jesus Christ one day we'll begin to see Jesus and that is not the time where we can say oh Jesus I heard about you you know I heard things you know great you know I, you know that you're an awesome things like that it will be too late we only decide when we get to meet Jesus pursuit of Jesus Christ has to be our ultimate goal our ultimate life goal that we that we continue going and this woman with the issue of blood for 12 years she did not stop she was going from place to place because she knew there's gonna come a time where she will meet Jesus she will encounter Jesus and that will change the course of her life she will be no longer known as a woman with the issue of blood but she'll be known as a daughter of the most high God she will be known as a son uh, that son that Jesus Christ has died for she knew that she pursues her life for Jesus Christ one day she will begin to encounter him amen church we have to understand that it's not how big our faith is it's how big our God is it's not it's not the faith that, that God does not look this morning oh if you you know read so many chapters that you prayed so much for you to receive he's looking at do you just trust him as simple as that as faith as small as a mustard seed that says God I rely on you God I trust in you God I know that I'm not I'm not worth it you know I've sinned I've fallen back you know these things are happening you know I, I've slid in back so many times but God I trust you I believe with you and that faith as a mustard seed qualifies God to be able to attract the attention of God to say who touched me this morning Who's the one that reached out? Maybe you are called, you know, by your issue. But Jesus Christ stops at his tracks and wants to tell you that, look, you're not stealing a blessing from me. You, I know you. I formed you in your mother's womb. I know you by name. I know the, the hair count on your head. I inscribed your name on the palm of my hands. You are the apple of my eye. You're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. I know you. You are not your issue. You are my son and you are are my daughter make Jesus Christ the pursuit of your whole life don't give Jesus just you know a few don't just give Jesus just you know a Sunday service just a Wednesday service make it your life goal make it something that you pursue you know when we have morning prayers when we have you know uh, Friday night prayers that it's you devote your whole life into seeking Jesus because Jesus Christ is the ultimate solution to every problem that we have in our lives amen church and that is something that she said to herself if I only can touch Jesus' garment the thing about this this story is that she was at the wrong place she couldn't be in the public she was at the wrong time Jesus and if earlier I don't know we read that Jesus was going to a ruler's house a ruler of a synagogue he, Jesus was going to a big man's house no, Jesus was when the crowds of people because it shows we read that she was struggling to touch him there was a crowd of people with her she was at the wrong place she was at the wrong time she was disqualified and it's like she was standing in the place and and Jesus already has passed by it she was telling herself Jesus is in a big mission Jesus is you know she's not going to concentrate on me because who am I compared to this ruler who am I compared to this guy who's, who's big and Jesus is going to his house his, his daughter is dying at least I'm living you know why should I stop Jesus at his tracks 
and at the point Jesus already passed by because it says and it says in the scripture that he says if I can only come behind him there came a point where Jesus already has passed by her but she knew that you know I might not even get his attention I might, I might not even see him face to face but I'll I'll come behind him I might not even touch his hand or you know Jesus healed before he he touched people you know some of some people you know Jesus he spoke a word to them but this Jesus is already walking by he's going somewhere but yet even if I get behind him I'll still receive she encounters a position there was a crowd so many people are, are touching Jesus so many people around Jesus there's no place to get Jesus attention no place to touch Jesus she, she begins to fall on the dirt she begins to fall on the ground the dirtiest part she says if I only can touch the bit pieces of Jesus clothes that are dragging on the ground the dirtiest part of Jesus clothes if I can only touch that I can receive from Jesus and that's when Jesus Christ begins to see that and that's when Jesus Christ begins to encounter her and to be able to see that Jesus is able to give her that thing what Jesus died for the dirtiest part of Jesus clothes is able to give this woman with the issue of blood the answer that she was looking for for 12 years to be able to give Jesus attention she, Jesus already knew that if if she's he's gonna pass her by she will never receive that miracle that he's died for the dirtiest part of Jesus clothes qualified this woman to receive a miracle of 12 years the dirtiest part of Jesus as, as Jesus was going to his mission as Jesus was good doing whatever the thing she was still able to get attention of Jesus Christ and receive that thing which her life depended on this morning as we are in this place some of you maybe it's your first time some of you may be coming and you feel disqualified maybe you feel like Jesus is doing things you know Jesus is on his mission to do things who am I to receive from Jesus even if you feel like Jesus has passed you by there's still that dirty part of Jesus's robe that can give you that healing that deliverance and the breakthrough that you're looking for even though you feel like you can't get the, the attention of Jesus Christ if you can't see him face to face there's that still the dirty clog of, of Jesus's robe that can bring you that healing that deliverance that you need from Jesus maybe you're called your issue maybe you're called by your problem by your weakness Jesus this morning wants to call you a son and a daughter. Jesus wants to tell you that you are formed in your mother's womb. Before you even, before you create Jesus formed you with his own hands. You are a son and a daughter of Jesus Christ. You're not your limitation. You're not your weakness. You're not your problem. You're not what your parents told you. You're not what your, your, your generation has always happened to. You are not that. You are not your issue. You are what God says you are you have what God says you have and you can do what God says you can do and Jesus turns to each one of us this morning he says who touched me